and welcome to my tutorial video for Turn It In. So you can see here I'm in D2L and I've gone ahead and submitted a file uh, through the assessments tab to the Dropbox. And you can see I have my file here with one submission. So to get into the Turn It In report, what we need to do is click on View History. If there was more than one file here, what we would do is click the drop down box and select a file. As I only have one, it's right here. Um, but then you would go ahead and click apply to bring it up. So here we have our Turnitin similarity report. This particular essay, what I've done is copied and pasted off the internet. So you can see that it's 100% similar to the, the color red. Um, red is generally an indication uh, that it's very, very uh, high, that it's found a lot of material similar on the internet or in other student databases. It starts with blue, which is around 10 to 15 percent or less, and then it goes to green, yellow, then red. However, you should never take the percentage or the color to mean that there's no problem or that there is a problem. For example, even if there was only, say, 10 percent found similar, if you didn't cite that 10 percent correctly, you could still um, end up with a plagiarism charge. And uh, conversely, if you have a very high similarity, if it's a technical course where there's only certain specific right answers and they're all the same, you know, across the board, or if you're doing a research paper um, where you're mostly quoting other people's work and just uh, amalgamating it together, you're going to get a high similarity report. So the best thing to do is to always go into the report itself and see what's going on. And so we do that by clicking on the color. You can see this brings us into the document viewer view of the Turnitin portal. So my assignment is on the left along with a breakdown of what's found on the right. So starting at the top left hand corner, we're always going to be looking at originality. You'll never have to check grade mark or peer mark. You can see with my work, the entire essay is highlighted in red. There's no citation at the bottom, which is very, very bad, meaning that it's been plagiarized. Uh, you can see that there's only one icon, meaning that all of this has been found from one single source. And now on the right, if you look, you can see that I pulled this, in fact, off 123helpme.com, which is an internet source. If you click on the right arrow that comes up when you hover over it, it'll actually give you the information straight from the website. Uh, in this box, it's a text representation of the website itself. So all of this information in this box is actually straight from the website. You can see I didn't copy and paste the lead in, but basically I've copied the entire essay. So on the right hand side, you can see other sources that it comes from. Since this is a readily available essay on the internet, you're going to be able to find it on other websites as well. For example, here we have azidi.com, 100%. And oh, this isn't good. You can see that a student actually submitted this paper. If you click on it again, it'll bring up the title. It was submitted to Gateway High School uh, by a student, so they plagiarized. You can see it was actually submitted by a number of students. This is only 73%, so they only copied a chunk of it, but still, uh, if they didn't cite that properly, they could get into a, a large amount of trouble. Okay, we'll click back to get back to the match breakdown. So this is a very uh, cut and dry, um, it's 100% plagiarized, so it's pretty easy. So let's take a look at, at a more realistic example of an essay that I actually wrote myself. So we'll go back to D2L, go back to my course list, and it was English Literature. So we'll go into my Dropbox, and I want to look at the media study. So I'll click View History, Media Study, Apply. So you can see here it's blue with 15%. Again, do not take this as an indication that you're good to go. You always want to go in and take a look. Okay, so pulling it up. You can see my report on the left-hand side with the, uh, the match overview on the right. So you can see the first part of this pulled up, 12%. Submitted to Lansing College by other students. So what we see here is, is actually the title, and these are the questions that the teacher gave me that I've copied and pasted into the essay. This is why it's pulling up from other students at Lansing College. A teacher is not going to give you a problem uh, for this, so it's it's not an issue. And this is why it's important to go in and actually check. You can see number four was just a formatting issue, one page. Uh, this is a common Microsoft Word format, so it's going to be picked up by others, uh, other essays as well. 
So scrolling through, you can actually see that most of my issues are in the work cited. You can see again that uh, other students at Lambton have used this particular biography.com uh, reference and then other students as well have used uh, these other references. So clicking on the right, you can see a further breakdown that it was submitted uh, to Walsh Jesuit High School. And again, because when someone writes an essay or a report, it remains their intellectual property uh, so that they cannot actually show the original report in this box, only if it's a public domain website. Okay, so now that we've verified that most of my issues are in the work cited, sometimes it can be convenient uh, to filter these out. So what we can do is at the bottom right hand corner there is a filter button. If you click on that it pulls this up and you can actually just click exclude bibliography. Hit apply changes and then it's going to discount anything that's under works cited or bibliography. Other useful filter options are for quotes. Um, if you use quotes and in in-text citations it will pick it up. Again, I strongly recommend you don't use any of these filters right away because you may have put in a quote and forgotten to cite it, in which case it will pull it up and, uh, and let you know. Um, but once you go through and see that all your quotes are good and you just want to focus on the problem areas, you can exclude quotes as well. Another useful tip, we'll switch this back to uh, the original view. Another useful tip is you can, you can see here, I just picked up the word film, and uh, the inclusion of things very very small that a teacher is not going to give you problems over. Just parts of a sentence, you know, a, a phrase like the inclusion of is not going to get you in trouble as far as plagiarism goes. So what you can do is go back into the filters and you can exclude matches that are less than a certain amount of words or a certain percentage of the report. Use your best judgment here but uh, you know a safe bet is if you say it's like six words for example hit apply changes and then anything that is less than six words should not show up okay so that's filters another view this is the document viewer view there is another view called text only report some people find this a little easy to read I personally prefer the document viewer but this is the text only view it's all the same information just rearranged a little bit and some people find it a little easier to read you can see our filters are moved over here our document is still on the left hand side with all the matches on the right. From this view we can also print and download the report. Okay, so switching back to document viewer. When looking at a report it's going to pull up the most common submission. So like this first part, 12%, was most commonly submitted uh, student paper to Lansing College. If we click on this button here, it'll actually link all the individual sources. So you can see these are all individual student papers that have been picked up. You can see some are 10%, some are 5 uh, It definitely varies. This can be useful if they're websites, because then you can actually click on these and view the, the website information. But again, since these are student papers, you're just going to get this message saying that it remains the intellectual property of their authors. Okay, that was Turn It In in a nutshell. I hope you enjoyed. Um, for more information on how to uh, work this in D2L, or for more information on D2L in general, be sure to check out the D2L tutorial that is also available. Thanks. Have a great day.